corner of the house searching for her letters, which in her view had been abandoned like defenseless victims, violated and left for dead. She could not help crying as she scoured her in-law's house for pages where she had poured her heart out to Anna. When she could not find any more pieces of her heart lying around, she sat down and prayed. Asha prayed for a miracle, for the abandoned letters she had not found. She wished the words in all those letters would come alive and simply walk away free and safe, no longer trapped in a cage <coughs> like animals in a zoo. If anyone found one of those letters, they would see a blank sheet of paper. Her words, as if written in magic ink, would simply have vanished. So eventually, she does leave Anand, um, but it sort of, <coughs> she tries to be sure that what she is doing was within, within both her convention and that of, uh, of the, the world she, she lives in. It is difficult to say precisely when Asha finally gave up on Anand. It was something everyone, including Asha, realized retrospectively when she no longer went to spend her weekends with him. The family were relieved she had accepted the things she could not change. They prayed and thanked God for giving her the serenity to do so. <coughs> Asha could not fathom why everyone had made such a big deal of marriage. Was it some kind of a collective hoax? She knew marriages were about a lot of things. Security, money, power, land, alliances, advancement, and sex, of course. But these were not the kind of things she had sought for herself, not in her marriage anyway. What about marriages based on love, respect, understanding, kindness, honesty? Isn't a Swami a husband akin to God, someone who loves you unconditionally? Asha asked Rashmi, this is her friend, though she could have been talking to herself. <coughs> no, that's what your parents do or are supposed to. A husband doesn't love you that way. Not usually anyway, replied Rashmi. She told Asha about a cousin of hers who had doused herself in, in kerosene and set herself alight one afternoon when she could no longer bear the brutal treatment of her in-laws. Her husband was at work, the mother-in-law had gone on a pilgrimage to Kasi, and the servant was on leave. Why did she not return to her parents? Asha asked, astonishment written large on her face. And in the end, finally, um, Asha also leaves her home and her, the place that she was born in, you know, with all her hopes. So, so this is how the last chapter begins. All my life I have been waiting, all the things that happen to me and those that do not, all the people I meet and those I don't, keep defining me inexplicably. Life is what happens to us while we wait for things to happen. Asha paused. She needed to think between her thoughts. Good things come to those who wait. A mother's voice rose up an elegant staircase of light, rising skywards. Instantly, she could hear her father's voice. In the long run, we are all dead. Must learn to live amid, un amid uncertainties, contradictions, remain open to possibilities. Her thoughts scampered around like dragonflies in a pond. The flight had been delayed a couple more hours since the rescheduled departure time was scrawled illegibly on the notice board, which was barely visible, placed as it was behind a massive pillar near the entrance to the airport. Flights to Delhi from Bhubaneswar were not scheduled daily. When a flight took off, it was an event. Delays, cancellations and postponements were common in all aspects of life. If anything happened on time, it was more by accident than by design. In the distance, a man cleared his throat and spat noisily before shooing away a street dog that snarled, that snarled back at him, scuff shuffling the dust. Crows fought over a dead lizard, or was it a field mouse? A miner took off lustily with its trophy, a fat writhing worm dangling from its beak. They, 
Cacophony of human voices, barking of dogs and chattering birds provided the background accompaniment to a song from the Gita Govinda playing full blast from a radio in a tiny tea stall near the government-owned owned Orissa handloom shop that had the pride of place inside the airport lounge. The voice of Raghuna Pranigrahi cast a spell. Harine Karasam, Harine Karasam. I think I'll stop here. <laughs> Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Shanta. Let's just have a little chat about um, some aspects of the book. Um, I was glad that you said quite early on in your comments that uh, Asha had quite a happy childhood because for much of the book, she's not very happy. Um, briefly happy again when she falls in love with Anna, but it goes disastrously wrong. Um, for me, one of the strengths of the book was in fact the relationship with her mother, Karuna, which uh, is initially happy and protective, but she seems to pull against her mother so much. I'm just wondering um, whether you were kind of working out something that you felt you must put down about your own upbringing and relationship with your mother, because unimbed it's all embedded in a, in, in a great love between the two, and yet misunderstanding between the two. I thought that was very subtly handled, and I'm just wondering whether, if it's not too personal a question, you were kind of reliving it through, through this book. Well, I think there are various issues that raised here that one is the sort of conflict between parents and children. And uh, can I go on here at the back by the way? No, I think you need to speak with this. She's being the only daughter and not having a, a sister. So so in terms of her rebellion taking a focus and shape, it was her mother. And because there was this strong bond, I think what she felt was that um, this, uh, it's not that her mother didn't treat them the same as the sons, because sons are valued, still valued, <laughs> more than daughters, but that's changing in a big way, but then, you know, sons are valued everywhere, I think, in the world. So, but things are changing, but at that, in that sort of context, you know, there was, she, she distinctly felt that, that difference between, she probably didn't feel it when she was younger because there was enough love to go around. There was still enough love to go around, but Karuna is one human being. She's, she's but in the end... One the ability to, to... So that comes through sort of in a later on. Yes, love runs all through the book, yeah. really, but sometimes but there's, it's there's so pushed away. Yeah, yeah. Because, because Karuna also mm -hmm. felt that because she was the, the daughter, she wanted to... She didn't want the daughter to, to suffer the way she did. Yeah. So she tried to teach her all the things <laughs> that she probably, if she had left, led a more normal life, she would have probably not uh, sort of you know, wanted her, her daughter. If we had longer, we could explore other of the characters, but I think people will find when they read the book that there are kind of, um, there's a density to this book. There are a lot of characters, the father, other relatives, there are other marriage ceremonies in the book and so on, all of which conjure up a variety of different characters, and it is one of the strengths of the book. But what, I want you to go back to the, to the origins, really. Asha, right from the start, is a great reader. She's an intellectual, she's um, someone who writes from an early stage. Again, I imagine this has strong elements of autobiography in it. But um, I wonder whether you yourself felt, as you embarked on being a writer, a poet, and now a novelist, that you were conscious of that great tradition of female writing in India itself. Um, right back to Toru Dutt through Kamala Makandai, we, we, people in this room will be able to name so many Indian female writers, and especially novelists. Did you kind of consciously aspire to be like them? If, if you're talking about me, as opposed I am, to not, I am yeah. talking about you. I, well, I, I think the family Everybody wrote a lot, you see. Everybody in your read, read and wrote a lot. Yes. My, my grandparents 
my father's father my, uh, he he was writing an article for, for the local newspaper when he died so he, he was sort of very active intellectually but at the end my uh, maternal grandfather he he was more private he, he he did a lot of writing and work but he didn't sort of you know, send out all that uh, so so maybe the difference, so the entire family, my, my mother is a writer and she was writing poetry. She used to get programs in the All India Radio, but when so many children came along, uh, that was constricted. My father has written lots of books. So there was writing was very much in the family, 